So when we think about relationships, we tend to think about the fuzzy feelings that we get of happiness and joy when relationships are developing. We tend to think of the tried and true connection that people make while they're maintaining a relationship. And sometimes we think of the sadness that people experience when the relationship is over. But we don't always talk about or even think about the dark side of romantic relationships. And we need to do that to fully think about what it means to be in an interpersonal romantic relationship. First off, let's talk about betrayal. So romantic betrayal is any act that goes against expectations of a romantic relationship and as a result causes pain to a partner. This can mean everything from you have a promise that you will only keep information that's super personal and private between you and your partner or partners. And the other person goes out and shares information with a family member or a friend. That would be an act of betrayal. It could be that you have made a commitment that you will be faithful and committed to each other in a sexual manner or maybe even an emotional manner and that person goes outside of it. I've heard arguments on both sides that sexual infidelity is worse. I've heard that emotional infidelity is worse. No matter which side of the argument you fall on, I would say both sexual infidelity and emotional infidelity can cause harm. As with any betrayal, sexual and emotional infidelity can lead to a breakdown of trust that can be almost impossible to repair and can still lead to suspicion and worries after the fact. Then there's deception. Deception is when you intentionally misrepresent something about yourself or about the couple or about the partners. It can mean misleading the other person by holding information. It can be presenting false information. It can even be making up messages that confuse the other person in, un, intentionally. So for example, think about catfishing. We've probably all seen the stories where someone falls in love with someone on the internet and they don't actually know what the person looks like because the person's been sending them the wrong picture and saying that it's them, this is what it looked like, but it was actually somebody else. Maybe just a picture they Googled. So that would be an act of deception. Another act of deception would be what's called gaslighting. So saying, oh, well, I don't know why you're so upset with me. You're always so upset about the littlest things. You do this all the time. And making the situation seem like such a big deal and using their words to paint a picture that makes you feel like, oh, well, this is maybe actually my fault. But in reality, they are intentionally deceiving you so that the blame is off of them and now you feel the blame. Regardless of what type of betrayal you experience, it's important that if you want to deal with that betrayal, that you become assertive. Either addressing what your concerns are and needs are and trying to find a way to either forgive and work through it, or maybe considering if the relationship is something you want to stay in. Regardless of if you stay in the relationship or not, one act of betrayal can lead to issues of trust for your entire life. So it's important that you, one, address it, be assertive, but also that you try to remember the good things about yourself and not see it as your own fault. Like, oh, well, they only betrayed me because I did this, or I pushed them away, or I made them think that I didn't care about them, or something like that. It's important to also, if you do go into another relationship, continuously try to look for the good as opposed to waiting for that moment to drop when they, this new person betrays you. In addition to betrayal, we have the aspect of jealousy. Now, jealousy is a protective reaction to a perceived threat to a valued relationship. So this can be everything from you see someone flirting with your partner or partners and you feel a threat it could be where you see your person online liking photos from someone else that does not look like you. You're wondering, huh, 
do they still like me? Am I their type? Regardless of if the jealousy is well-founded or not well-founded, it can eat you up inside. This is gonna be more likely to be a result of some insecurities, but it could also be the result of some intentional hurt caused by people outside of the relationship. So for example, wedging. Maybe there really is someone coming into your house, into your relationship and wedging themselves in, flirting, kind of pushing you away and saying, oh, well, talk to me instead, instead of the other person here. And so it can feel like you are no longer just your set people, your relationship, but it can feel like now this intruder has joined in and trying to steal your love away. If you find yourself being jealous, you definitely need to work on insecurity issues, talking more to your partner or partners about why you're jealous and what's causing that jealousy. But if there is something that your partner is directly doing that's causing your jealousy, letting them know and saying, hey, I don't like when you do X, Y, and Z behaviors. I would prefer it if you do this instead when situations like this occur. If your partner does not adjust their behavior or see what you're doing as irrational, then that can be a red flag that you need to address. Why do they not want to help you through your jealousy? Questions. It's also important to think about relational intrusion. So this is the violation of one's independence and privacy by a person who desires an intimate relationship. Now, to some degree, we all want to keep a, an eye on our partner or partners, but it can get pretty unhealthy if this person is constantly monitoring you or controlling you. For example, I had one student in class years ago who, because he had been cheated on in the past, asked his girlfriend to turn on her location and make sure that he always knew where she was, was at. And I thought, okay, that's a red flag, that's a little scary. Monitoring her to make sure that she was in a, I guess, neutral or safe location, just because you had a fear of being cheated on is what relational intrusion can be. I can't imagine what that particular young lady went through, especially knowing that there could be this monitoring, maybe even controlling behavior. This can also lead to an overall invasion of privacy where you don't feel like you're your moments to yourself are really your moments because this other person is constantly trying to make sure that they know what, where you are, what you're doing, who with, and you may not get to experience a comfortable life and have that alone time that you may desire. And then probably one of the biggest factors to talk about, dating violence. We've seen the statistics, you probably know someone, I've heard of someone who has been in a violent relationship. Keep in mind that dating violence can happen to anyone. There's no set age, skin color, sexual orientation that someone is that says this person is more likely to be a victim of dating violence. While the statistics are out there, it is important to think about anyone, anyone can be a victim of dating violence at any time. Usually dating violence builds up slowly. You're not gonna have someone hit you. You're not gonna have someone physically abuse you and kick you and do all those horrible things on date one. Usually there's a comfort level that is established and it can start very, very easily as maybe just jealousy. You know this person getting jealous on every little thing and then slowly but surely that jealousy becomes very violent anger and a need to control. If you are someone you know is in a emotionally or physically abusive or even sexually abusive relationship, then here are some of the signs to note. Does that partner isolate you from other people? And keep in mind telling you that, oh, that friend is a horrible friend, you should stop seeing them, when that friend is actually a horrible friend, is not isolating you. But if you feel like you don't have as many resources outside of your relationship anymore, 
that your friends and your family seem so far away compared to when you first started the relationship, this could be a sign. If they use their power to control you, one example can be financial power. If they pay for most things, and the second you say, well, I don't want to do this tonight. They say, oh, really? But I pay for everything that you own. Why wouldn't you do what I say? Or they suggest something, well, maybe you shouldn't go and see your family this weekend. I've already paid for us to have massages. That can be a way of using their power to control you. They may frequently threaten you. And they may even use emotionally abusive language while they're threatening you. That can demean you and make you feel like lesser than. And then again, this can be a moment when they start to gaslight you, where it's just the blame to you, where it's not their fault that they're abusive, but it's your fault that they are abusing you. If you find yourself in one of those situations, I'm gonna go back to that slide. If you find yourself in one of those situations, keep in mind that there are so many different places where you can get help. There are definitely shelters. There are definitely apps now that are out there you can use to develop a plan on how to get out of that abusive relationship. If you know someone who's in an abusive relationship, maybe just dropping small hints here and there, it may seem like why wouldn't this person leave an abusive relationship, but we all have our reasons for staying in whatever mess we're in. And when that person is usually ready, they'll make the move. As a good friend, be there when they're ready. Now, we've talked a lot about all these different aspects of romantic relationships, but I wanna make sure you understand the relationships are hard work. I had one friend who said, I can't believe that this was so much work. I thought when I got married, my life would be a fairy tale. No, no one's life is ever gonna be a fairy tale. But the most satisfying way to have a relationship and the ways that your relationship can stand a greater chance of surviving over time is if you and your partner have realistic views. Understanding who you're with and understanding your own personality and your own successes and your own flaws can help you understand what you're looking for and what the other person is looking for and how to navigate this life together. Additionally, it's super, super important that you communicate in ways that maintain the overall relationship. Thinking about being assertive as opposed to passive or aggressive, for example. Again, that assertive behavior is going to help you work through and maintain any conflicts that arise. So we spent quite a bit of time talking about how relationships develop over time and how they can deteriorate over time and even some of the dark sides of romantic relationships. I hope you have a better understanding of interpersonal communication with romantic partners. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out.